Hey guys, my name is Aditya and you have tuned into channel AQ. In today's video, we are going to check out the Cessna 172 home cockpit that I have built. So let's roll that intro and get into the review right away. So here you can see something that looks similar to the Cessna 172 with the G1000 cockpit. I tried to design it in such a way so that I have almost all the essential control inputs that are needed for a functional flight. Let's do a quick overview and let me show you the different sections of the cockpit. We start from the left with the electrical systems. So we have the master alternator switch, the master battery switch, the avionics bus 1 and 2, and a magneto starter. For the master switches, I've used simple rocker designs. And for the magneto, I got a cheap automobile key starter on Amazon. The lighting controls use single throw toggle switches and are mapped to the beacon, landing light, taxi light, navigation, and strobe lights. We also have fuel pump and pitot heat. Now let's move over to the Garmin primary flight display. The display is actually an old Samsung tablet. I use an app called Space Desk to extend my computer monitor and simply drag and drop the PFD screen from the game. I've used seven rotary encoders in total for the navigation one frequency, for the heading, for the altitude, for the navigation two frequency, for the course correction, and I've used two encoders for the flight management system. I've used a total of 32 push buttons, which you can see over here. 12 of these are marked for the autopilot system, 12 are for the Garmin 1000 soft keys, and six more for the flight management system. The two on top are to switch between the active and standby navigation frequencies. All the above components are mapped to the respective controls on the simulator, making it a fully functional primary flight display. The multifunction display is just another phone running Space Desk on it. None of the multifunction display controls are on the dashboard since I control all of them using the primary flight display. In the center, I have a push pull switch mapped to the parking brake. Moving over to the right side, I have a landing gear switch. But wait, the Cessna 172 has a fixed landing gear. Then why? Well, I often tend to fly the Beechcraft Baron that uses the same G1000 cockpit but has a landing gear that can extend and retract. I fly the Baron at times because it's faster and climb higher altitudes. Whenever my flight plan requires this, I switch between aircrafts. Further to the right, we have the trim wheel connected to another rotary encoder for the elevator trim tab. I've also added a servo to show the current trim indication. Below the trim wheel, I have the throttle and mixture controls, for which I have used the slider potentiometers to register the input current depending on the position of the slider. To the right, I have a flap selector. It is currently mapped to only four inputs for flaps up, flaps 10, 20 and down. But it has a potential to deliver a total of 12 input signals if required. The last switch to the far left controls the panel lights which run on a separate 12 volt power. I have used a LED light strip to illuminate the panel. The board has been covered with grey vinyl wrap and I got all the control words printed on sticker sheet. The push buttons have been detailed with black marker and a special thanks to my wife for writing with paint on them. All the rotary encoders have knobs and I have used a wheel from an old toy as the trim wheel. The flight yoke has been constructed with simple PVC tubing and a sliding mount. I'm using a rotary potentiometer for the roll axis and two slider potentiometers for the pitch axis. Currently, I do not have anything to control the yaw and I will work on a rudder system soon. I have a single button on the yoke which I have mapped to the brakes. The entire setup is controlled via an Arduino Mega and an Arduino Pro Micro. The softwares are pretty simple to set up 
but will require a video of their own. So let me know in the comments if you would be interested in watching them. Finally, a big thanks to the Flight Simulator and Moby Flight community on Discord for helping me out with my silly questions and doubts. Now let's do a quick engine startup and fly around for some time to show all the input controls in action.